Hi, I'm Mary and this is Dreamy Goat Design Studio and this video is the last video of our first natural dye online study group where we focused on yellows. So let's do a recap of what we've accomplished in the last two months, months which I think is pretty great. I'm only going to show you what I dyed with this Blue Face Lester yarn. Now this is of course undyed. This is its natural ecru state. It's also called Clickitat uh, commercially. This is what I started with. These are the, some of the colors that I acquired when I did my dyeing. Although please note, these are just first baths. They're not second baths. There's no dipping in iron. No, there's no, obviously there's no uh, material, no fabric, no silks, no whatever. Just the yarn to show you the wonderful yellows that are available, easily available to you. All right, the first one is <clears throat> O.C. Joint Sawdust. Okay, a nice, Middle of the road yellow. Here's a second one, which I was pleased with. I hadn't dyed with safflower before, and I really like this very greeny yellow. Okay. And now we have the two welds. The one that I made the mistake with, where I dyed with calcium carbonate, and then the one that I like, really like, with soda ash. And then we have marigold. And remember how I did the little experiment with marigold? The darker yellow here came from the lighter yellow flowers, while the lighter yellow here came from the darker, brighter orange and red flowers. I also wanted to show you too, though, what I had dyed a year ago. This is also marigold, although I don't remember what color the flower petals were. I actually think they might have been the paler yellow, this one. But I'm showing you these just to show you we're dealing with nature, we're different, diff, uh, dealing with varieties, and it's great. That's what's so fun about this. So these are three marigolds, okay? These are your commercially available yellows. There are more out there. I just showed you these four. Um, but we also have then all of the dyes that are available in our kitchen, in our gardens, and of course in the great outdoors. Uh, as you probably suspect right now, yellow is the most easily available color in nature. This is our onion skins. Gratifying, fun, bright, a kid pleaser. And this, probably not so gratifying to kids, but gratifying to me, is avocado pit. This is a sweet neutral. So if we put these aside for just a minute and look at some of the other options that are out there, well, there are thousands actually, but let me just show you what chamomile, yes, the tea, can give you. In fact, there's still some chamomile in there. Uh, you can, I suppose, open up a hundred tea bags to get your color, or you can just buy it in bulk at a natural food store, or you can buy it online with, uh, from the same distributors such as uh, Aurora Silk, uh, Earth Hues, Botanical Colors, Dharma. They will all carry these very um, accessible yellow dyes. You can also go out to the hinterlands when you're out hiking, and you can pick up mullen and get what I thought was going to be a pale yellow, but in t it turned out to be a beautiful fawn, very delicate. This, by the way, this plant is called nature's toilet paper because when you're out hiking in the Sierras and you have an emergency, you can grab one of their very soft, broad leaves, leaves and uh, use it as needed. But, um, and here's how it's spelled. But if you're looking at these and saying, why would I go to the trouble of growing my own flower or harvesting from my hikes, why would I go to all this trouble to get just these blah colors? Well, think of them as very rich uh, neutrals, okay? By themselves, yes, they're humble, they're modest, uh, they're not flashy. But what if you were to take this neutral and add it to two other neutrals? Now this is an alpaca, a Surrey alpaca, naturally black, and this is a Surrey alpaca, naturally mahogany. Look what these three neutrals do. Blended, uh, spun together, they're just gorgeous, okay? Don't underestimate neutrals. Similarly, 
if you're taking this, and I actually think this is a hard color to work with. So let's see if we can jazz it up a bit. Well, we can stay in the pastel range if we want. We can put it next to a soft gray, which by the way is not, an, is not a natural gray. In fact, there's even a little tiny bit of blue in there. It is dyed. And you're going, ho oh, hum, that's not good. Let's try another neutral. This, I believe, was dyed with cutch and an over bath of, or a post bath, I should say, of iron. Okay, maybe if I start thinking of, um, I don't know, some fancy intarsia or something. Let's add a little bit of color. Now, here is a lavender, still very pastel. And this, I believe, is either a fourth bath logwood on yak and silk, uh, or maybe it is a cochineal, very pale cochineal with a very uh, weak indigo vat. I'm not sure what this is. I'd have to look back at my notes. Maybe you don't like that, though. Maybe you want to jazz it up. Well, go to its opposite on the color wheel. Now we have some wonderful possibilities for socks. Look at this. Or... Here's cochineal, again, maybe. I'm not too sure about that one, but that could work. Anyway, you can, you can use these as either background neutrals or little tastes of yellow, if you like. Don't be put off by the yellows that are everywhere. So you can go out to your garden and you can pick your rosemary or your uh, ivy, and you can have yellow. You can also research available colors in books and I just want to show you a few from my libraries my library I should say I think these two may be out of print but you could certainly google the topic North America dye plants or weeds a guide for dyers and you're going to find something they're both by Anne Bliss and they have been wonderful for me to use over the years here for example is the plant Mullen illustrated a description and it will tell you what you can get in terms of color if you use the various mordants. Um, and that includes some of the more controversial mordants. Here is another version, and which is so great, Weeds, A Guide for Dyers and Herbalists. Here's another illustration of Mullen. Okay. Here is the queen of all dyers, Rita Buchanan. I don't know whether these are still in print or not, uh, a Weaver's Garden is everything you'd want to know about growing your own garden of dye plants. Uh, this will definitely inspire you to do so. And this little one, I've used surprisingly a lot. Hollyhock, yarrow, tansy, marigold, coreopsis. Really, really helpful. And most recently, A Garden to Die For by Chris McLaughlin. Uh, it's lightweight, it's fun. She talks about using tea, which I haven't done yet, but someday I will. Hollyhock. Pear. She goes on and on. And you probably all know about her harvesting color. This is Rebecca Burgess, How to Find Plants and Make Natural Dyes. And um, Pokeberry in California. She shows you the regions and the seasons where you can find these. Here's a couple more. Black Walnut, yes, definitely. So there's a t just tons and tons of information and it's endless, it's endless. We've had a good start with the last two months. I've enjoyed it enormously and I've learned a lot from you dyers out there. So I'm going to bid adieu to study group number one and we're going to start study group number two in just a couple days and that will focus on the reds and the oranges, okay? So we're moving around that color wheel. Okay, thank you, and we'll see you soon.